Good morning, everybody. Let's ignore my inside out backwards shirt. I feel like I've been MIA, even though my last video was just two weeks ago, but I've just been very, very busy. I've been applying to grad school, and yesterday I actually got accepted into one of the two programs that I am applying to at the University of Amsterdam. But now that I know that I'm in and that I'm going, regardless of which program it is, I am now panicking, thinking about how I'm going to choose which books I'm going to bring and which books I need to prioritize reading within the next seven months so I don't have to, you know, bring them with me or anything like that. So before I talk about the books, I just, I'm so embarrassed, I have in my channel description i have a link tree and that link tree will lead you to my goodreads my email and my paypal tip jar and if you would like to donate any amount of money to my tip jar ugh, like i don't want to i'm just gonna leave it out there any money donated to that will be put towards my grad school fund because I'm financing myself. Like if you have two cents that you want to donate, like it would just mean a lot. Like I'm so embarrassed. It's just there. Okay. So if it, you feel in your heart that you want to contribute, it's there. But if not, it's okay. Don't worry. 100% there is no compromising. I am bringing with me The Secret History because even though I haven't read this in I say a while, but it's been like less than a year. This is one of those books that is like a home to me. And if I'm going to be moving to another country and I'm going to be putting myself through grad school curriculum, I know no matter how confident I feel right now, it's going to be a transition. And what better book to transition into a new life than this one? Basically like my favorite book. <sighs> So this is coming with me. There are so many books that I just feel like I just need to finish so I don't have to worry about bringing them. <laughs> and I think the top one on that list is Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. This needs to be read before I go. I can't bring this with me. Like there's no way. I can only bring books that are like this size and even that has to be limited. So I think like once I read this monster, I'll be satisfied. I mean, it's not like it's going anywhere. It'll be here on my bookshelf at home. Uh, <laughs> another book in that category, Ada by Nabokov. This needs to get read very soon. Bro, this needs to get read. But I feel like I've been making really good progress like only reading books that I own. Eventually, my goal is to have read every single book that I have, and I haven't bought a single new book in 2024. I don't plan on buying any new books in 2024, at least, like, not before I go to grad school. It's something that's going to pain me to leave behind. This beautiful, beautiful copy of Glamorama. Here we have all- oh, this lighting is terrible, I'm sorry. Here we have all of the celebrities. We have Keanu Reeves, Naomi Campbell. Kate Moss. I'm gonna have to leave this behind and I don't think I'm gonna reread it before I go because it scares the fucking shit out of me. But yeah. Something that I can compromise with and bring with me is Lunar Park. And I think Rules of Attraction, even though I don't think Rules of Attraction is too necessary for me to bring. If I read this, it's going to make me want to go on a bender <laughs> when I'm over there. Uh, so maybe I won't bring this, but maybe I will. Um, American Psycho can stay. I don't need to bring that. I thought it was going to be really hard to kind of decide what's coming with me and what's not, but I think I'm very good at prioritizing. I think I'm going to be okay. It's going to pain me to leave A.K. Blakemore behind. I just shouldn't be bringing a hardcover book overseas maybe i think i'm gonna try to reread this before i go because it deserves another read but i don't think that it like deserves a spot in my suitcase deserves is not the right word because i love this book something else that i desperately need to read is demons and then depending on how good it is um 
you know, maybe I'll sacrifice space and I'll bring it, but I don't think it's going to be necessary, especially when I'm already set on bringing the adolescent because this book, what's his name, Arcady? He is so confident in himself because he has goals that he hasn't told anybody about. And even though like now I'm telling you guys that I got into grad school and like people in my life know that I got into grad school, knowing that you, he, he even says in this book, like when you have something to fix your mind's intellectual eye on and it's like deeply personal and within your spirit, it is so fulfilling. And that's how I feel like I'm going to go over and nobody's going to be experiencing what I'm experiencing. And I'm going to devote myself fully to my studies. Living abroad on my own to study has always been a dream and it hadn't worked out in the past so this book speaks so much to all of these feelings that I have in this transitory phase and like I know I'm naive and young and this is just needs to come with me you know what else can stay a little life can stay I've already said I'll reread this when I'm 30 let's appreciate the warping from reading this by the pool and on the beach but yeah this deserves a reread but not in the next five years and i so clearly remember everything from that book that touched me and moved me and i can close my eyes and go back to a little life that i don't need to have it with me <laughs> a book that i really want to bring i think having it with me will be a real treat and then i have a shit ton of haruki murakami books and my favorite 1q84 no matter how much I love it, I don't think it's necessary for me to lug that all the way over. And I feel like I should be able to find it in a library. They have a ton of English options and so many bookstores that I think I'm not going to be without things to read. That's why I'm kind of prioritizing books that are really sentimental to me. So that's why I'm like trying to bring like the books that will keep me grounded and bring me back to my home and my life and like feeling like myself. If that makes sense. So The Idiot by Elif Batuman, as you guys know, I love, love, love this book, but I feel like I've reread it enough times now. Like I reread it like five times and I think I've moved past this, like past needing it. And I think I can leave it behind and like take the lessons that I've learned with me and channel my inner Celine without having to have it physically with me. But I am going to bring Kafka stories in Spanish and even these Chekhov stories in Spanish I think I'm gonna save these and bring them because they're so skinny and perfect to fit in a suitcase and it'll be really nice to read something in Spanish when I'm gone and like you know missing home and things and definitely before I go I really need to prioritize finishing this book and reading this book um, Luis Carlos Galán, Intimo y Público, Mi Hermano, and Mario Galán Gómez, Un Hombre Hecho Por Sí Mismo, by Gabriel Galán Sarmiento. I think I've mentioned in a past video, Gabriel Galán Sarmiento is my political uncle. He's married to my wife. I mean, <laughs> he's married to my aunt. I have been, in the past few weeks, watching Pablo Escobar, Patrón del Mal, and that show really doesn't touch on any of the narco-trafficking aspects of his cartel as much as it touches on the history of Colombia and the terror that went through the country in the 1980s, especially in the year 1989. So that being said, I feel like I understand the story so much more and I understand the significance of Luis Carlos Galán, especially in the country. So that's why these are really important for me to read. And, you know, Gabriel is 80 years old and I want to be able to talk to him about these books you know, in his lifetime. Also coming up next, this book was in the pile that my phone is on, <laughs> James Baldwin, Going to Meet the Man, and Ocean Vuong, Unearth We're Briefly Gorgeous. These two I'm definitely going to be reading within the next month or two. Lastly, maybe Moby Dick. Moby Dick is definitely on my read before going list. I started this in seventh grade and never finished it, and I feel like now is the time. I might as well finish it and finally return this copy to my uncle who lent it to me, like I said, when I was in seventh grade, which is now 10 years ago. 11 years ago. Holy shit. <laughs> Man, yeah, I've got a lot of things that I'm okay leaving behind. I feel like it's not worth showing like, oh, okay, this is a book that I definitely don't want to bring with me, even though I love it. Also, before I go, I would love to finish reading Dante's trilogy. I have it 
my phone is on it right now, so I'm not going to move it, but Inferno, Paradiso, Purgatorio, I want those red and done. I feel like this is all possible. I mean, seven months is a really long time. If my friend Mary Grace sees this video, this Oppenheimer book, I feel like I'm never going to read it. Um, this is just like a panic buy. Like, she told me to pick anything that I wanted for my birthday, and I chose this, and I don't know why. Like, I'm obviously interested, but I feel like I'd rather even just listen to an audiobook. I'm pretty sure somebody commented in one of my videos where I talked about this that the audiobook was really good, so I might as well just get something else that I want a little bit more. <laughs> Okay, and then something, the, I think like the last thing I'm going to say is that something that will pain me to leave behind is Anna Karenina, but I'm positive that I can thrift my own new copy when I'm over there. And, um, and then what will I do when it's time to come back and I have a bunch of new books? I guess that will be a video for me to make in 2025.